Hey there CNCers, Scott here from CNC Labs, hanging out in the shop with my buddy, Johnny5. I'm here to give you a brief tour of some of the softwares for your CNC. Look, at some point we are all CNC beginners, so I made this video to show you just how easy it is to go from start to finish. Let's plunge in. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that little notification bell to get all the latest and greatest content from CNC Labs. We have an incredible tool chain resource on our website. It'll help you choose which software is best for you. I'll post the link in the description below. When I bought my CNC, I had no previous experience working with one. So deciding to buy one and not actually knowing if I'd be any good at running it was intimidating. Like with anything though, Practice makes perfect, so I grabbed scraps of wood and went to town to learn about all the things. Setups and bits and all the program options. Made mistakes. No! More than I care to admit. I had victories. Yay! As small as they were. The important thing to keep in mind when starting with your CNC is that the sky is the limit. The more time and effort you put into learning all the things, the further you'll go. Keep in mind that most of these softwares have free and paid versions. The great part about this journey is you can start with free software and stay with it, or as your knowledge and skills advance, you can choose to pay for the software, which will typically get you more options. All right, so before we start, just some uh, general project info and advice. Um, you want to have some idea of what you're going to design or create before you start. Part of the reason is you want to make sure you have enough material to do what you want to do. Um, it's not as much fun to carve air, I can tell you that. Another thing is making sure that you get the material used and have the exact dimensions. It's important because you'll need to enter them into the software when you create your project. All right, enough talk. Let's get into the first program. This is eCarve Pro by Vectric. It is an offline based model, which means you don't need internet connection to run it, which is great. There are free trial versions that you can download from our website. Uh, the thing I like about Vectric is it's easy enough to learn, but advanced enough to carve just about anything you can imagine. So, so we're going to create new file. This is what we talked about uh, earlier about having your material size measured and knowing what it is so that you can punch it in here. You can set your Z0 position either to the top of the work surface or the machine bed. I think most people typically work from the machine or the material surface. However, there are certain situations where it's nice to work from the machine bed. The XY datum position is really cool because you can switch where it starts to carve from. Uh, again, most people typically start from the bottom left, but there's lots of instances where you may want to start somewhere else. You can change your material settings here. It doesn't show up in the 2D view, but it will show up in the 3D view, so you can change it to whatever you'd like. Let's stick with Canadian Maple. We're going to hit OK. Now we are getting into all of our file operations, vector creation, and those things. With Vectric, the ability to create vectors is quite strong. It's on par with CAD or Illustrator as far as what you're able to achieve. We are going to just do something really simple, like creating text. So for this one, we are going to type what we want to carve into our material. We're going to go something fun like long mill rules. There we go. Uh, the nice part about Vectric also is that any true type fonts that are installed on your system will show up in the menu. Some of them might show up a little bit weird. Uh, if you select them, they might rotate, but for the most part, they should work. Uh, you can change your alignment. You can change your text height if you want to go that way manually. Let's say 0.75 inches. You can hit close when you're done with that. In order to move things with a metric, it's just a matter of selecting it and then double clicking. There you go. We are going to just align this to the middle of our work piece. Lots of different options within each menu. Again, I'm not going to go through every single thing. I'm just trying to give you a really quick rundown of how easy it is to go from start to finish. Now that we have our font selected, the size that we want it, we are going to select the type of cut that we are going to create. 
in this case, we go to our tool paths, which is up here. Click on that. I like to pin Ouch. the menu to the side so it doesn't keep bouncing around. Under your toolpath operations, you have lots of options under here, you know, profiles, pockets, drilling, all kinds of things, inlays. Again, I, I encourage you to go and experiment. That's the best way. And if you're not sure, there's lots of resources out there that explain each one in more detail. But for the purposes of this, we're going to do a pocket toolpath. Click on that. It automatically brings up the last settings that we used. Before messing with the settings, though, I am going to rename this just so I remember what it is. That's important because when you start having more tool paths added, if you don't remember what it is, it may get a little bit sloppy. From there, we are going to go to our cutting depth. The starting depth is where it, on the work surface it's going to start from, and the cut depth is how deep it's going to go. So I'm going to go an eighth of an inch. I'm just using an eighth of an inch end mill, which you are able to go into the menu. You can Select it, remove it obviously from the list and it'll be gone, or you can edit it. Within the edit menu, you have all of your important information. So your units, obviously, the diameter of your bit is going to be very important, especially when you're zeroing. Uh, the number of flutes on your bit, pass depth, all of these things. Again, go in, play with them, look online for more resources. There's so much information out there. So we're happy with what we have here. So we're just going to hit OK. So we're going to also click on ramp plunge moves. Uh, this is going to save wear and tear on your bits as they are cutting into the work surface. Instead of just going straight up and down, they're going to kind of gradually fade into the cut. It'll save the sharp surfaces from getting dull too quick. So before we can hit calculate, we have to have our vector selected, which is going to be our line. Once we have that, we can hit calculate. And it's going to bring up our 3D view now, which is going to show us what is going to get carved. Once Vectric has calculated your toolpath, it's going to bring up this preview. You're going to be able to preview all toolpaths. You can change the speed that it previews. One thing I do really like about Vectric is that when you hit preview all toolpaths, you can see each pass that the router is taking. Uh, some of the other software do not give you that option. It's nice to see what's going to happen so you know what to expect. So we're going to click preview all toolpaths and you can see as it goes, it's showing you each individual pass that it's taking to create your carving. And you can speed this up so it goes quite a bit faster if you don't want to sit here and wait. If at any point you don't want to continue waiting, you can always hit the little red X down here and that will stop simulating the toolpath and you can keep on going. Now that it has, has previewed all the toolpaths, you can see what you're going to get. You can move around in this 3D view. So the preview is finished, but I'm really glad that I noticed this before I went too much further. I can't stress how important it is to actually look at your 3D preview and make sure you're pleased with what it's going to carve. Because sometimes what you see in that 2D view, right, isn't necessarily what's going to happen in the actual carving. All of this looks great, but if you zoom in, you can see that that eighth inch end mill can't get through the skinny part of the E. So you would have, you know, if you didn't look closely, you would have carved that and then you'd see when it was done, oh man, it didn't do what I wanted it to do. So uh, I, I've done this myself where I didn't look closely enough and something happened and I got finished and went, ah, sometimes you can fix it, sometimes you can't. So again, just make sure you have a really good look at that preview. It's there for a reason, and it can save you a lot of trouble in the long run. If you're happy with what you see here, then you can hit close on this. And then you are going to save your toolpath. So you have to have your toolpath selected. There it is. It's showing you everything that's going to happen. You are going to hit save toolpath. Now that we've hit save toolpath, we have the option of saving just the selected toolpath or as we get more advanced, we have more toolpaths in there, we can pick other ones. As of right now, we're just doing selected. We are going to make sure we have the right machine selected, the right post processor. And depending on whether or not you work in inches or millimeters, that will depend on which one you select. We used inches, there we go. We're going to save the toolpath. I'm just going to replace my long mill rules path. And that is it, we're good to go. Now that we've got to this point in our project, you can see it's pretty easy to go from point A to about a third of the way through. 
the process is super similar between all of the other software, so the best thing you can do is just get out there and go and play around. First thing we're going to need to do before we even open the program is make sure that we connect our USB cable with the ferrite collar to reduce signal interference to our laptop. So that's what we're doing here first. So now that we've saved our file and our toolpath out of Vectric, we are going to open up GSender. There it is. GSender is the second part of AnyCarve. Uh, Vectric, we create it and we save the toolpaths. GSender is the when we open the file and send that instruction to the CNC itself to actually carve the file. So the first thing we're going to need to do is connect our computer to our CNC. So we do that. Your machine will make a sound and now it says idle. The next thing we're going to go over are some of the basics. The jog control, which is how to actually send an instruction to move the CNC around the table itself. And it's pretty straightforward. One thing I do like about G-Sender is that you have the ability to on the fly change how far your machine moves each time. So if you go from rapid, it obviously changes to one inch. Normal, lower dimension, a little more specific and precise is very precise. So when you're moving your machine around, if you need to do it manually, you have really quick control on how far, how far and fast you can move it. All of the settings within G Sender, you are able to go up to little cog and change. So you can change your settings for your precise, normal and rapid movements. You can change your actual dimension if you want inches instead of millimeters or vice versa. And there is a host of other tools in there that we'll get into in another video. For the time being, Jogging the machine is pretty straightforward. I have it on rapid, so it's going to move one inch every time I click in any direction. We can see that it is now moving X, Y, sorry, Y, X, and now Z. Uh, after we have established that, we are now going to load our file that we just saved from Vectric. So we hit load file. Mine is called long mill rules. We hit open. Get rid of the recent file. Now we have opened it up. So this is what we saved out of Vectric, and you can see that these are all of our tool paths. We can test run the job just to make sure that the G code that we saved actually is going to work properly because it would suck to get halfway through and find out there's an error saving it that we could have avoided. So we hit test run. You will see it is going through our carve and all of our paths to make sure that there's no errors. Checking our G code file. Depending on how complex your carve is, is going to depend on how long this takes, but it usually runs pretty quick. Now we have approval, it's good to go. The next thing we're going to do is zero our X, Y, and Z. Again, we have great videos, resources on the website for this, but we're gonna run over this really quickly. Okay, we have our file loaded with our G code from Vectric. We are now going to start showing you a really quick rundown of how to zero your probe. Uh, you wanna make sure that your C and C and your workpiece are square to each other. So that's the first part that I do. So I will get my trusty, dust, trusty, rusty, trusty, whatever I'm trying to say. I get my, my set square out. I know that my table and my CNC are square to each other. So it makes it really handy having this that I can use to square off my workpiece. Uh, again, you're assuming that your piece is square. Sometimes it doesn't work out that way and it takes a little bit of extra effort, but uh, I like to start with getting this squared up so that when I go to zero, my X, Y, and Z, I don't have to worry about moving the piece afterwards and then having to redo the work. So I square it up first. So now that I know that this is square to the table and the piece is square to the set square, I know it's gonna carve right around the middle of my piece. So I'm gonna put a clamp right down here to hold it in place. We are going to create another video about these T-tracks and the clamps, they are super handy. Um, there's lots of ways to hold your work down securely. I find these ones really, they, they, they just do the job really well. So now that my piece is square to everything, I can put my set square away. Now that we have our piece squared to our C and C, we are going to use our touch probe to find our X, Y, and Z zero. So we're going to take this probe we are going to make sure it's plugged in. We're gonna put it on the corner of our workpiece. We are going to then jump over to G Sender and we are going to use the jog control to bring our router bit right over top of the CNC circle on this. 
I'm not going to lie, I've already set this up, so all I have to do is hit this button once and it's going to move right over for me. Bam! Now that we have that there, we are going to look at our probe settings. It's going to ask us which axis we want to zero. It's going to ask us our tool size. In this case, it's a 1 8 inch bit. That's what I've already got in there. The settings are already on top. Then we're going to hit the probe button. We have to make sure that our magnet is connected to the collar of our router. That's super important. That's done. Now that we have this pop-up that's come up, there's going to be a red light or a little red circle there that says, we need to make sure that this is actually working. So we're going to touch our probe to our router bit, and you're going to see that that light is going to turn green. Bing! Green. And when it turns green, it says that we can start probing. I like to hold on to the corner of the probe just to make sure that it doesn't get pushed off my workpiece. It's pretty sensitive. It's probably not going to happen, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. So here we go. Start probe. It has probed, it has found my X, Y, and Z zero. We can take this off for now and put it off to the side. It has moved the router bit to a safe height above our work piece. And now we are ready to rock and roll. Let's go carve this thing. All right, we're ready to carve, but before we hit that button and get that machine going, let's just take a quick second and double check everything. We've created a super handy checklist that I'll put in the link in the description below that just runs you through, especially as a beginner, some of the things that you wanna make sure you double check before you start carving, just to make it as seamless and as smooth as possible. We want it to be enjoyable. So we've tried to take some of the guesswork out of those first bunch of carbs until you've created good habits. We're gonna talk about putting on the dust boot really quickly. If you haven't got one, I recommend it. I started without one, I got one after. Tons of dust before next to no dust after. Hooked up to your shop vac makes a huge difference. Once you've gone through that checklist, once you've double checked everything, the measure twice, cut once rule, then you're ready to get going. Hit that button, let's see some chips fly. So as I was saying, here is our dust collector. Whoa! This thing is the easiest thing in the world to put on your machine, but it makes a huge difference. Magnets, hold it onto this bracket. It mounts with two or three bolts, depending on which version you have. You click it in place, that's it. You grab your shock back hose, you put it on, whoop, pushed a little too hard, and that is it. This thing is a game changer. If you don't like dust in your shop and you don't want the extra mess that comes with it, make sure you grab one of these. It's a huge difference maker. And she's off. Remember, these speeds were very conservative, and I will post a link into the description to our speeds and feeds table on the website. The other cool part about G-Sender is that you have the ability to turn the speed up and down on your carve on the fly, as you can see by these plus and minus buttons shown here. And poof! Just like that, you've done your first sign from start to finish. Now look, it's not always going to go as planned. There's going to be broken parts, busted bits, and wasted material, but you got to start somewhere. So go, experiment, play. Okay, maybe not yet. I have a few more softwares to show you. Let's go. Hey there, CNCers, back for round. Hey, software is called Easel. It is made by Inventables. It is an online program, which means you need an internet connection in order for it to work properly. We're going to give you a quick rundown on how to go from start to finish here. It will not take long. This one happens pretty quick. The first thing we're going to do is go project new, which I've already done. And then we're going to rename it. Let's call it something that makes sense. Long mail rules seems to make sense. From there, we are going to change the dimensions of our project to our actual piece of wood or whatever we're carving. In this case, it happens to be 10 and 3 quarters by 4 five and three quarters by five eighths. There we go. You can see it automatically updates in both the 2D preview and the 3D view. You can choose to work in inch or millimeters. I like inches, so I'm gonna stick with that. 
From here, we're gonna to go to our creation menu. Same as every other software, there are the same options available, just in a different look. We're gonna click on fonts. There are free fonts that come with the free trial, and if you pay for the pro, there is an expanded library. We're gonna pick something simple. Here we go. In order to edit this text, we are gonna double click on it. And we are gonna type something that makes sense again. And we are excited about this. So we're gonna put some exclamation points. There we go. From there, we are going to select our font. We are going to go to Predit, Edit, Center to Material, just to get her in the middle there. Now we're going to talk about the shape and the cut menu that pop up automatically when you select something. You can change the position it starts in. You can change its position on the piece. It's width and height manually. Did I say height? Height. You can change the angle and rotation and the font. Pretty simple. From here, you can go to the cut menu and this is going to show you how deep this is going to cut. Within easel, it gives you a visual representation. The darker it is, the deeper it is, the lighter it is, the shallower it is. There we go. I'm gonna enter in manually an eighth of an inch. Within the cut menu, after you set your depth or before, you have the option to change the cut path. This is what type of cut it will make. For our purposes, we are going to use a clear out pocket, which will cut out the pocket. Cut on the shape path, outside and inside. So for our purposes, again, we're gonna hit clear out pocket, gives us a nice clean cut, and then we can move on. Easy peasy. From here, you can see how fast this is going. It doesn't take much. We're gonna to go to our bit menu. Again, with the pro version, you will get more bits and the option to add more bits up here. For now, we're going to go with a straight down cut. We're gonna select it. You can see that it's been selected from this menu. We'll bump over to our cut settings. You have the option of automatic, which will happen automatically or you can go manual if you either disagree with what the automatic settings are based on your material settings, or if you just wanna play around. I've changed it to a little bit faster because the automatic settings were way too conservative. It would take way too long to cut this. Plunge is another one of those options that does not happen in the freebie. You'll have to get the paid version to do that. After we've gone through all of our settings and our menus, we are going to now simulate what this cut is going to look and how long it will take. So you have your text or whatever you're carving selected. You hit the simulate button in the 3D preview window. It's gonna take a second to do its thing. And now you have the ability to see what it's going to carve and how long it's going to take. So with my settings, we're about 12 minutes for this. You have the ability to hit play on the preview. What I don't like is that it doesn't show you each pass as it's carving. Maybe not a huge deal to most people, but I like to see that level of detail. So you have the ability to speed it up quite a bit and it'll rip right through this to show you how long it will take and which paths it will take. After you have gone through all of your menus and your settings, then we are going to save out the G code that is gonna allow us to open it in G Center and actually carve this thing. So we're gonna hit project. We're gonna download the G code. It will automatically save it to where you have saved it. That's about it. It's pretty simple. It's a question of, do you wanna pay for the pro to get some of the perks or do you wanna stick with the freebie just to experiment? Okie doke, we are back. This is Carbide Create, the third software we're covering in this tutorial. It is free, it is offline based. There is the option to upgrade to pro uh, you can even try the pro version for 14 days where it is fully functional. Uh, after that, you will lose the ability to save toolpaths. So if you're interested, uh, Carbide is very simple and to the point, but just as powerful as anything out there to get the job done. Let's dive in. So we're trying a new cursor software. Let's try this out. Hey, there it is. So we are first going to set up our file. We are going to change the dimensions to what our material is. We are going to start in the lower left and our thickness is from the top. We are going to pick whatever material we want. 
inches for our units and we are good to go. There's our nice piece ready to go. Like I said, it is simple, but it is powerful and it gets the job done. Uh, all of the same tools are here that are in any other software, just in a different location, maybe with a different name. So get in there and have a look around. We are going to create some text. Again, let's stay with the theme of how awesome the long mill is. There's our long mill rules. We can choose whatever font we want because it's based on what is on our system. So let's pick something like that. We are, you can go by the height, the spacing, all of those things. We're gonna hit apply when we are happy with it. There it is. When we select our font in order to edit it, to change it, you just double click. There it is. You can make all the changes you need to. Because this is kind of small, we are going to scale it up. So we're gonna select from those transform tools and make it a little bit bigger like our pieces. Clearly snap to grid is on. You can turn that off in the options if you'd like to. There we go. There's our long mill rules. From here, we are going to go to tool paths, right up there at the top, right there. Same as the other softwares, we have the option of what tool path we're going to do. Make sure you have your toolpath selected first or that your line selected first. We're gonna use pocket like we have been. We are going to first edit our tool. So our step over depth, our plunger feeds are all gonna come up automatically with what the last piece we had was. We are gonna select our tool and you can go into the list and find what you want. For this, we're going to click on softwood end mills and there's my one eighth like i've been using all along it's going to come up with the speeds and feeds and all of that stuff already you can modify them if you want them to go faster or slower okay it's going pretty quick this is not all that tricky in this one so our start depth is zero it's the top of our piece our depth of cut we're going to do an eighth of an inch like we have been you can rename your toolpath to whatever you want to name it. One eighth and mill. There we go. We're going to say OK on that. It is now going to pop over to showing us our toolpath. It tells us approximately how long it's going to take to do what we're looking to do. We can change our simulation to whatever material we would like. We are going to click on show simulation. And it is going to bring up the 3D preview, just like all the other software. And just like all the other software, let's make sure that we are happy with what we see here. There is no point in not looking closely. It'll only take an extra second. As you can see with this one, we can actually get through this skinny part of the E because we picked a good font and the eighth, and eighth inch is good enough to get in there. Once we are happy with that, we can Hide the simulation if we want to go back to our 2D view. We can show the simulation again if we want to go back in. One really nice part about Carbide is that it does have V-carving included in the free version. Easel does not. From here, if we're happy, we are going to save the G-code. It's going to pop up with where we'd like to save it. We are going to save that. And now that we have that saved, it's as simple as opening it up in G-Center just like we did with Easel and just like we did with Vectric. One small note about using Carbide is that you have to set your X, Y, and Z manually. There is no ability to use the long mill touch probe with it. Good to know. Another cool feature that Carbide has is their online based uh, print control boards software. So you go to the website, you can launch Carbide Copper, and it will bring up the ability to create your own PCBs. Almost, not automatically, but you know, certainly serves the purpose. Um, just another cool option that I don't know that anybody else offers something this specific. So if you are interested in looking into that, check it out, it has all the options that you would probably need. Oh boy. We're back with the last software. It is Maker by Carveco. 
This program has every option known to man. I won't lie, I found it a little overwhelming the first time I opened it. There's a lot of stuff going on there. I found throughout the process it was a little less intuitive than some of the other ones, but I eventually got used to it. I have boatloads to learn. Um, the best way for you to find out if you like it for yourself is to get out there and try it out. So you can check out on our website, there's Carveco Maker subscription, which is a huge plus for not wanting to pay a lot up front is you can just pay a monthly fee, have your subscription and be on your way. You don't own your software at the end of things, but that's a choice you will have to make. So the whole point of these videos was to show you how easy it is to go from start to finish. With Maker, I've made this process as easy as I think I can. So if you follow along, you should be able to get there. So we're going to go to new model. We are allowed to set our dimensions, height, our units and our starting point. We are gonna click okay. Maker starts up automatically in the 3D view, but there's your 2D tab up there if you prefer working in that. Totally up to you, it does not matter. If you need to adjust your document settings after you've made it, you can click on that guy up there and you can change them in here if you need to. We're gonna leave it as is. Now we are going to create some text right here. A tricky part about Maker that I found out the hard way is once you've typed in what you're looking to do, if I were to click off here, it would just disappear. You have to hit the create button over here first. This is just one of those things. I didn't find it as intuitive as some of the other softwares. So let's go through. You have to make sure you have your font highlighted. You can change it to whatever you're looking for. I'm gonna leave it as is. You can change your other settings just like all the other ones. And then when you're done, you're gonna hit create. That makes this a reality. We can see that this fits on our piece just fine, but if you do want to scale it, you can hit this guy right here for transforms and we can scale it up just a little bit. A little hint, F9 will center it on your workpiece. We are going to select our text. We are going to go over on the right here to this toolpath. We're going to click on it. We're going to focus on the 2D toolpaths for right now. Just like all the other software, this is where you find your different types of toolpaths, your V carves, your profiles. We are going to create area brings up another menu. All the same settings, just called something different, different location. The finished depth is what we're gonna focus on for this one, eighth of an inch. We are going to add our router bit in here. And as you can see, I went wood or plastic, roughing and 2D finishing, and I'm picking my eighth of an inch end mill like I have been all along. You have all of your standard settings that you can play with if you'd like to. It's the best way to find out what they do. Select. We're gonna move down a little bit and we are again going to turn on our ramping moves. This will save the wear and tear in your bits. We are then going to define the material thickness. Probably important for the machine to know what's going on there. We hit setup. We add our material thickness and we hit okay. We are going to give our toolpath a name. In this case, shockingly, it's long mill. We are going to calculate now after we've named it. You can see that it has changed from just an outline to the actual path it's going to carve and follow. Once we've hit calculate now, we are going to go back over to the long mill toolpath that we created. We're going to go to this guy here. This is the simulate button. We are going to click on it. It's going to bring up some instructions on what we want to do for height and models. And we're going to hit simulate because we're happy with what's there. And you can see that it has changed. A little bit tricky to see in this preview, so you're gonna go back over to the right where the simulation drop down is, and then we're gonna to go to rendering. And you can see that here you can change your material. It just makes it a little easier to see what's going on. You're gonna apply that. Now you can see what's going on. Another part with Maker is in your 3D preview, you're using your middle mouse button to scroll in and out. You're using your middle mouse button plus shift to move around, and you're using your middle mouse button to rotate. So it's a little bit different than some of the other softwares out there, but it'll still do the trick. You're going to get in there and you're going to want to check on that preview to make sure that everything's the way it's supposed to be. It's hard to see what your toolpath actually looks like, so you can select it and see there it is. And again, that eighth of an inch end mill will not get through some of these skinny parts. 
I'm okay with this for now. Make sure you're happy with what you have. We've gone through that. That's just getting to be good practice. After we have made sure we are happy with what is going to carve, we're going to go back over to our toolpaths. This time, we are going to look at our toolpath operations, and in particular, save toolpath. Make sure you have selected your toolpath in your space. Click on save toolpath. You're going to make sure that the long mill, the toolpath you named, is the one that you want to save. Where you want to save it, you're going to call it something. In this case, I'm going to leave it as long mill rules. Let's call it part four, because I think there's other ones on my desktop already. We have the right machine format, inches or millimeters, whatever you're comfortable with. Make sure it's the same here. You're going to click save. That will save the toolpath to your desktop or wherever you save it to. After you have saved your toolpath, it's as simple as going into Gsender, opening up your file, running the job, all the things that we went through earlier in the video. If you've gotten this far, then congratulations, bingo, you've made it through the jungle of Baker. See, that wasn't so hard, was it? Now it's up to you to get out there and start experimenting. Quick recap on our software. Vectric, easy to use, can do everything, but it does cost up front. Easel, simple to use. Carbide, similar to easel, but you get up and running easily. Maker, a little more complex, but it is subscription based, so if money's an issue, that might be the way to go. Please leave a comment down below to let me know what other videos you'd like to see me do. If you liked what you saw here today, and you want to see more cool content, check out our website or our YouTube and make sure you subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. See you around the CNC.